Hello, this is uh, Jay Rodman. I wanted to try doing a slightly different set of videos. Um, I wanted to call these something like games played reasonably. Um, games where uh, they're not played like a crazy expert that's mastered the game entirely because I'm not that good and because that's something other people do and not played completely ineptly like someone who's never seen it before just kind of playing the game and maybe talking about it while I play it um, mostly trying to focus on games that are like super old so people won't have seen them before but um, really for my own enjoyment so for starting this off I want to start out with them my own favorite super 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 old game um, really the first of its kind for the Atari 2600. So this is a game, this is sort of the first game console. I mean, there were some other earlier game consoles, but, you know, like people think of the Nintendo as being the defining game console of its era, the Atari 2600 was definitely the defining game console of its era. There were some earlier things, the Fairchild, there were some later things that were interesting, like in television, kind of overlapping in time. But the Atari 2600 dominated the market. It's what everyone knew. It's what your neighbor had in their house. It's what you, you know, went to the store and borrowed games for. Adventure was the first attempt to translate some text adventures into a video game format. And in the process created some new genre. Kind of created a new genre. Kind of just noodled around and made some stuff. Anyway, I'm going to play the game. Uh, so here we are at the level select screen and on the Atari you played um, you 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 pressed uh, a little levers on the front of the console uh, so here is what would happen there was a level select this particular game only has three they were called games sorry game select so I'm gonna run game number one so the first thing you'll notice there's no sound initially uh, and I'm playing as a very high complexity square. Um, uh, this was programmer art, like, and also the resolution on this thing was very hard, high, uh, very high, very non fine resolution, very coarse. Uh, like this key here, this would be a typical sprite complexity you could achieve without tricks they figured out later. Anyway. Uh, and this is a one-man show. He did all the art in binary, you know, all the game logic, etc. That's kind of how they did it back then. This happens to be the golden key, and it gets access to this golden um, castle, which is sort of my home base. Uh, I happen to be yellow here, but I'll be different colors. This, this item here, I always sort of think of it as the arrow, but it's supposed to be a sword. Someone, you know, I guess it was easier to draw it facing to the right. I don't know, programmer art, what are you gonna say? So now we're gonna go find the yellow dragon, which looks like a duck. Yep. A strong bad from Homestar Runner fame has kind of forever cemented them in my mind as ducks. But anyway, and here's the green duck, or green dragon. To kill them, you just make contact with them and the arrow. There's only two dragons in level one. So I'm done with the sword. You can only hold one thing at a time, let me show you. Uh, here I am picking up the sword and I walk into the key and I drop the sword. So you can only call it one thing at a time, which means sometimes you have to make uh, backtracks if you need two items. And this, this area is called the maze. It makes no sense by the way. Uh, let me try to show you. So um, I'll go maybe down here and leave this key so you can tell what I'm doing. This, this area kind of makes sense, like left goes left, down right goes right. Th these, these areas are to the left and the right of each other, and if I go up, we can see the area that I'm going to be in a moment. So this set of connections makes some sense. But then I went up several and over to the right, and I ended up, you know, looping around in a bizarre way. And it's not even like a wraparound. It's weirder than that. It's sort of random connections as... You know, the programmer felt like, I don't know. I don't know how the decisions were made, but it is freaking weird. So here I am going to the left, and then I'm going to go to the right. And there was no way through, so I went to the right instead. And then I go up 
two, and they end up in the same place. Just and that's and that's the the correct path. So oh, here I'm at the black castle using the black key. Uh, there happens to be a magnet here, but it's kind of pointless. It's just there. I'm not going to talk about it right now. And this is the objective of the game, the golden chalice. Uh, and the point, well, the objective is to bring the golden chalice back to the golden castle, and then you win. Um, I'm going to take over the bridge just to show you. There's a bridge. You can you can move it, and wherever you put it, you can go across that thing. But not left or right. Only let me. Yeah, not left or right. Only only vertically. Um, you can do some weird thing. You can get into real uh, tight. You you can kind of break the game by playing with the bridge and the magnet. But anyway, that's a victory. And I'm gonna take a moment. So that was level one or game one, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and play game two. Uh, game two, game one is kind of like training wheels. It's kind of like most of these Atari games. By the way, I never said, I don't know if I even said the name of the game. This is Adventure. That's the whole name. Um, and uh, the, the, the air, this was released in 1981 uh, when all that had existed kind of before for the Atari 2600. Well, not all, but most of what existed before were sort of single screen games. Like I fly a tank, you fly a plane, and no one leaves the, the, the screen and we shoot at each other. So this was kind of like a much wider scope like there's like kind of a world although it's a very limited and there's kind of some exploration uh it was definitely a, a a large change for uh video games at the time although uh on a text-based games had already kind of created many of these complex things and this was sort of an attempt to adapt the complex exploration stuff a little bit to video games you have to realize uh the size of these games were two kilobytes you know, they ran in 128 bytes of RAM. Like, there were some serious constraints uh, that this game was designed under. So they could only do so much. Okay, so level two. Level two, level one and two are fixed. They start out with everything in the same position every time, which is partly why I kind of know what to do. So the first thing that happened here is we have a bat. The bat is independent. He or she, whatever does what he or she wants. I mean, it's programmed, of course, but it has a little bit of its own mind. Here, what's actually happening is I'm holding the bat like an object, and the bat is holding the sword. That, that That's what's happening here. And the bat can sometimes get away. It may fly off on its own without me being able to have control over it. Uh, but, but mostly, you get to hold on to it until you start bumping into other things. Now, I actually don't remember this game perfectly oh there he is so okay so i found my first dragon this this level has three dragons there's the yellow and green and red and the red's really mean and i think there are no dragons loose at this point so that means the sword has no particular value to me um right now but um i know i'm gonna need the bridge soon so i'm gonna try letting Labat loose here with the magnet see if he goes and picks up the magnet, leaves the leaves the sword. I'm gonna move the sword to the middle of the room uh, for safety reasons that I'll get into later. And I'm gonna move the the uh, well the bridge here too because I'm gonna need it later. This area is an all is a maze like the maze in the last level, but um, you can't see more than a little distance. It also kind of connects up in a nonsense way. I think there may be a dragon in this castle. I cannot remember. So uh, I'm going to go get the sword. If it's still there. Because the bat, as you saw, he swapped items. And he'll keep doing that. He'll fly around kind of... That's mainly his main thing. Is he flies around with one item. I can only pick up one item. He can only pick up one item. It's fair. And... Um, okay, so I misremembered. There's no dragon in here. Uh, oh, so incidentally, the bat cannot go into castles. So, like, I, the one reason I put this key inside the castle is to reduce the number of objects I have to worry about the bat, the bat dorking around with. So, what he does is he flies around and just decides to drop one object and pick up another. That's his main behavior. Um, 
So now what I'm looking for is I'm trying to remember where the white key is. That's my next goal. And I have not seen it. So let's go searching. Ultimately, we want to go into the black castle like the first, like in the first game. Oh, right. The white key starts out in the maze here-ish. So uh, that means the bat is trading. Oh, he's trading the magnet? Hmm. That makes me think that the white key may have actually been moved to the other side. So this is, the bat does kind of shake things up. You don't know how things will work out exactly because the bat will do different things. He's probably purely deterministic, but you know, I don't move exactly the same way every game. No, so, okay, that's right. I gave him, hmm, I gave the bat the magnet effectively. Well, one clue is that the world here is blinking. Uh, so notice how here it's not blinking, here it is blinking. That means there's probably an object on this screen somewhere. I guess I did kill the dragon in this room. So that makes that means that the bat must have traded something for the dragon corpse when he picked it up. So most likely he swapped the white key for the dragon corpse and left it in a wall. The magnet would be better here. There we go. There's the white key. Okay, so I have most of the ingredients I need now to go in the white castle. I need most, first of all, I need the white key and the sword because there's a dragon waiting inside here. Uh, that is a very inconvenient location because I could get stuck back there, but uh, it's better than Better than being dead. Now I'm gonna need the bridge, so let's go get it. And we need the bridge because there's a very minor maze inside this castle. And we need to go through it, uh, across the bridge to get to this black key. So that was our whole objective of going into the white castle was to get the black key. Uh, I'm going to need now the black key and the sword to safely deal with the black castle. Uh, but I will have to brave the bat. So I need to bring those, both of those items to the black castle and I'll have to go past the bat to do it. So let's see if he steals some of our crap. Probably he will. There's like a bit of a trick. You can try to hold the item you have off the screen so you can't see it. But I have no confidence I won't get caught at some point. Okay, so there is a dragon in there. Um, the red dragon. But that red dragon... Oh, all of the dragons have items they like. An item... Well, well, some of them have items they don't like. The golden dragon for some weird reason, is afraid of the gold key. So you can kind of scare him off with it. It's a very strange thing. Um, I, I don't know why a dragon... I mean, I can see a dragon being afraid of, like, you know, a sword or a knight or something. But from a key, it's just weird. Anyway, um, they have items they like to guard. And they like some better than others. They all like the golden chalice a bit. And that red dragon is in the black castle with the uh chalice and he really wants to guard that thing and is going to stay guarding it um 
even if you know I went in there momentarily. He's not going to run away and wander and catch me at an awkward locate time. So at this point, the goal is really find the red dragon and kill him. Which, as you can see, oh, it, it's kind of difficult actually because there's so much blinking on the screen. It, there's like a a kind of I don't. It's like almost unintended problem that you can have if you have too many objects on a screen. Now the bat chose not to take the chalice from me. I don't really know why he sometimes chooses to and sometimes doesn't. But I managed to get a hold of him even though he grabbed it. And I'm going to try to win by entering the castle holding the bat who's holding the chalice. I guess they could close the gate, so it counts as victory. Whoa, oh no, I I swapped items somehow right there. That's so that that. Oh my god, this is like the most awkward thing ever. So here's an example of how you can break the game. Like somehow I swapped items right as I entered. It caused me to drop the chalice, uh, which means I can't get it. There are fixes though. In the like, for example, the bridge is a way to try to fix this kind of situation. Uh, that is a little more weird than I'm familiar with. Okay, well, the key is not there anymore, so I'm not gonna try to get it. Is the chalice still here? It is. Okay, so this is this is gonna be kind of awkward. Ha, I, I I actually don't know how you do this. Mm, can I put it? The magnet would definitely work. What if I put it here? No. Nope. So that I think the the trick is whether it overlaps with the gate. There we go. Victory. The manual actually had. A variety of instructions that kind of like described how you can use the bridge or magnet to sort of get items unstuck from the walls. But it's kind of part of the challenge because the bat puts them there and you kind of have to roll with it. You do, you pretty much always have some way to get out, and if you don't, well, it's a short game. So I think I'm not gonna play. Uh, the randomized level, which I could because it's just going to be more of the same and it would be fun for me, but maybe not for you watching. So that was Adventure Played Reasonably. Uh, see you next time.